come to the meditation because we want a happiness that's reliable. We looked at the happiness of the world outside, the pleasures of the world outside. We see that they come and go. And for most people, they just accept that. That's the way things have to be. But the Buddha didn't accept that. He said, what meaning is there in a life that looks for happiness and things that come and go? Because we come and go. We're subject to aging, illness, and death. The things around us are subject to aging, illness, and death. And what's accomplished if those are the things in which you look for happiness? That's why he left home, to look for something that was more reliable. He found it. After a lot of trial and error, he never let himself get dis discouraged by the errors. He stuck with that conviction. There's got to be something that doesn't age, doesn't grow ill, doesn't die. He found it inside. And so what we're doing is we're following his example. He's made a lot of the errors for us. We're still going to make errors ourselves, though, of course. We listen to his teachings. We can come up with all kinds of different interpretations that can really be far of the mark. And on top of that, there are our desires that go in ways that are counter to the Dharma. They get all, everything all confused. Let's try to keep things simple. Just now we chanted the Dhamma Chakravatana Sutta. It was all about the Four Noble Truths. Very basic question. Why is there pain? Why is there suffering? And is there a way to put an end to it? And the Buddha explains why there is, and he also explains that, yes, it is possible to put an end to it. Human beings can do this. That's why we're here. And a major part of the path is right concentration. It's ironic in a lot of Western Dharma circles in particular. People are warned off. So watch out, you're going to get stuck on concentration. Won't gain any insight. But as the Buddha said, if you're not stuck on concentration, you're going to go back and get stuck on sensuality, your thoughts about how you can find pleasure in sights, sounds, smells, tastes, tactile sensations. And those are precisely the things that he said are going to disappoint you. In fact, of all the different factors of the path, the very first one he encountered was right concentration. And it starts with just dropping your thoughts of sensuality, all the pleasures you can find outside. Focus on the breath inside. This is if you can find a pleasure in here, then no matter how tempting the pleasures will be outside, you have something to counteract them. If you don't have this pleasure inside, he said, if you, then no matter how you be, clearly you see the drawbacks of sensuality, you're going to go back for it. Because the mind needs pleasure, it needs a sense of well-being. So let's try to provide it inside. As you are sensitive to the breath, what is there in the breath that is pleasurable? If you're not sure, hold your breath for a while. You can't hold it any longer, and then breathe in. And the parts of the body that feel refreshed by the breath. Okay, that tells you this is what the refreshment of the breath is like. And you focus there. You find that some parts of the body are more sensitive than others, so you focus your attention there. And ask yourself, what would feel really good right here, right now? Even forget the idea that it's breath. Just say, what would be a sensation in that part of the body that would feel good? And the breath will provide it. Then you drink it in. The word for a rapture in Pali is related to drinking, as you're getting a glass of water. In the same way that if you've been going across the desert and you're really thirsty and then you can finally get a glass of water. And all the cells in your body seem to respond. 
to have that kind of sensitivity to the way you breathe. Because if you can't find pleasure here with the breath, you have to find some other concentration object with which to find pleasure, but it has to be inside in order to counteract the tendency for the mind to go out and look for pleasures outside. You're trying to change the balance of power here. So breathe in a way that feels refreshing. Think of the different parts of the body that to be tense or tired, and you breathe right into them. Give them whatever they need so that the whole body feels satisfied. And of course, the mind will then feel satisfied, breathing in, breathing out. Most of the pleasure of the breath comes with the in-breath. As for the out-breath, you can let it breathe out on its own. And think of the in-breath and the out-breath as being continuous. In other words, you don't have to create a sharp, distinguishing line between them. Because that tends to tense things up, tends to block things a little bit. And it's precisely what you don't need when you're trying to develop a sense of refreshment inside. It's all one continuous breath. When John Lee talks about the whole body feeling full, what would it be for the arm to feel full? What would it be for the legs to feel full? The potential is there. Often our problem is that we don't even think of that potential. And so as a result, we don't get any use out of it. What would be a full feeling, say, in your legs? Well, the blood fills the blood vessels, and the blood fills the blood vessels in your arms, and you're all over. Now can you breathe in a way that allows for that feeling to develop and stay steady? In the beginning it will be weak, but as you stick with it, it gets more intense. What you're learning here is learning how to be a connoisseur of the breath. And it is part of the path. It's not the goal. So it requires that you take some delight in it. As with every pleasure, there's a certain amount of embroidery commentary that goes along with the pleasure. We do this with sensory pleasures because they really need it. There's so many things that we like in life. We like them because we know how to talk to ourselves into liking them even more than what they really deserve. Certain foods, certain places, we have lots of associations that go along with them. And the associations are what the Buddha means by delight. So now we're having to, having to shift our allegiance, learn how to delight in the breath. Really get engrossed in the breath, how it feels to be right here, right now, satisfying the breath needs of the body. And use some ingenuity to get every part of the body well nourished. Some parts of the body require that you breathe in from the back. Or if there's a tension, say, around the chest, breathe right into it. You don't have to pull the breath from any other part of the body. We talked earlier today about provoking different elements or properties in the mind or in the body. We're really good at provoking some pretty unskillful ones, like sensuality. Here we're learning how to provoke the breath energy in the body in a way that's intriguing, satisfying. When you get a sense of how to make the breath energy really good in the body and learning how to appreciate it. That becomes your defense against a lot of your other cravings that would pull you out and get you to do unskillful things.
So take some time. The breath isn't something you simply step on so you can climb to a higher level and then a higher level and higher level in the practice. You have to settle in here, learn how to appreciate this. Because if you can't appreciate this, you're going to go back. If you can't find delight in this, you're going to go back to finding delight in sight, sound, smell, taste, tactile sensations. So take some time to really appreciate this and learn how to cultivate the potentials that are here in the way you breathe, in the way the, the breath energy circulates around the body. Because that will allow you to change your allegiance. As John Fuhrman said, you want to be good at the meditation, you've got to be crazy about it. And one way of getting crazy about it is to find a real sense of satisfaction and to keep pursuing that. Intrigued by the different ways that the body might need to be nourished. by this element of breath. So learn to delight in being right here. It's a good place to be.